Okay, so today we're going to do another flipped classroom activity. This one is for section 5-4. And what we're going to do is we're going to learn how to divide polynomials. Now first, before we divide polynomials, let's remember what it's like to long divide because it's been a while. Remember that you divide 8 into 4,572. So just like normal division, 8 would go into 45 five times. 5 times 8 is 40. Now notice, to do this problem, you have to subtract. And you'd be left with 5. Bring down the 7. 8 goes into 57 seven times. 7 times 8 is 56. 56 subtracted from 57 is 1. Bring down the number 2. 8 goes into 12 one time. 1 times 8 is 8. And we have 12 minus 8, which is 4. Now, 4 is your remainder. And we used to, when we were like in third grade, we put our 4, and then we got a little older, went to middle school. We knew that this was a 4 eighths. And again, as you move up the ranks, we know that this is... 571 and 1 half. So I put this up here not to insult you, of course, but I wanted to make sure you remember what you did in third grade when you learned how to divide. Multiply, write the answer, subtract. And you did that, bring down the next number. Bring down each number as it goes. So let's take a look at dividing as a polynomial. It is the same process, only this time we're going to have x's involved and very other variables and even higher degrees. Same thing, you are going to take 3x, whoops, you are going to take 3x plus 1 and you will divide it into 15x squared plus 8x minus 12. Now, the important thing to remember is you're always matching your first terms. So this term and this term are the ones that I want to match. How many times does 3 divide into 15? 5. So the first number I'm going to choose up here would be the number 5. 5 times 3 is 15. Now, x values. x times what gives you x squared? Well, x would. So I am choosing to multiply by 5x. Once again, 5x times 3x gives me 15x squared. Now, don't forget the other term. 5x times a positive 1 is a positive 5x. Don't forget, we need to subtract. And before, on the example above, we just subtracted one number. There are two numbers here, so you have to subtract, subtract. 15x squared minus 15x squared goes to 0. That's the whole point of doing this. 8x minus 5x is 3x. Bring down the 12. And then you're going to do the same thing that we started with. We're going to compare the leading coefficients. So as I compare the first two terms, I ask myself, 3x times what gives me 3x? Well, that would be the number 1. A positive 1, no less, because we want to match the numbers. So 1 times 3x is 3x. 1 times 1 is 1. And don't forget, you need to subtract, subtract. Those go away. Negative 12, negative 1 gives you a negative 13. So that leaves me with my remainder. Because that's a minus 13, we're going to put it minus 13 over the original number that you started with on this side, 3x plus 1. So final answer. 5x plus 1 minus 
13 over 3x plus 1. Let me put a little break in there. So that makes sure that looks like a subtraction sign. Let me just point out, if this would have been a positive 13, then I would have put a plus there. But since it's negative 13, I put a minus there. And that's exactly what we're going to do again on the other one. 4x. 4x minus 1 divides into this term. 20x squared minus 13x plus 2. Compare the first terms. I am looking at this first term and this first term, and I ask myself, 4x times what gives me 20x squared? Well, I'm thinking about this, and I'm thinking, okay, to get from 4 to 20, I have to multiply by 5. To get from x to x squared, I have to multiply by x. So I choose 5x as the number I'm going to multiply by. Notice that I am taking the 5x and I am putting it above the x term. 5x times 4x gives me 20x squared. 5x times negative 1, negative 5x. Don't forget, at this point, you need to subtract. So I'm going to subtract, subtract, which changes that sign to positive. These are going to cancel. Now I've got different signs. This is a negative 13 and a positive 5. Signs are different, so you're going to subtract and get 8x. This bigger one it has the negative with it, so we keep the negative. Of course, bring down the plus 2. And then start the process all over again. I am looking to get my two front terms to match. I'm going to think over to the side. 4x has to turn into a negative 8x. What would I multiply by to get that to turn into a negative 8x? Well, it has to turn negative, so I have to have a minus. And 4 times 2 gives me 8. So negative 2 is the number that I choose up here. Negative 2 times positive 4x gives me negative 8x. Negative 2 times a negative 1 gives me a positive 2. Don't forget, you need to subtract. So I'm going to subtract, subtract everything on the whole line. And this one works out quite nicely because I end up with a remainder of 0. My final answer is the 5x minus 2. So those are two examples of us doing long division. I've got a couple more examples up here. Um, instead of me working these out, I'm going to set them up, and then I will give you the answer, and then I'll have you try them. All right, so let's move on to another example. One thing that's really important about doing long division is that you have to have each degree accounted for. So look at the example in number four. You are missing some terms. You are missing an x to the third. You are missing an x squared. And then you do have an x or a linear term, and you have a constant. What you need to do in those cases is you have to put in placeholders. So this is what we're going to do. Of course, the x plus 3 stays where it's at. And I am going to put these numbers in here, but I'm going to account for all the different things that are missing. On this part, x to the 4th. Now, there is no x to the 3rd equation, so I am going to put plus 0 x to the 3rd. That's a placeholder. There is no x squared term, so I'm going to put plus 0 x squared. There is a single x, or a linear term x, and then I have a plus 10. Now, the most important part that we have here is you have a degree 4, a degree 3, a degree 2, a degree 1, and this is technically an x to the degree of 0. 
and now long divide. X, I'm going to compare the first term here and the first term here. They have to match. And I ask myself, so I'm going to put my little think bubble over here, and I'm going to ask myself, x has to turn into x to the fourth. How does x turn into x to the fourth? I would have to multiply by an x to the third. So that's what I'm going to do. Notice I put my answer, that's an x to the third term, above the cubic term here. x to the third times x gives me x to the fourth. x to the third times 3. That's a 3x to the third. Don't forget, you are going to have to subtract. Subtract, subtract. Those are going to go away. That was the whole point of picking x to the third. These have to cancel or you're setting yourself up for failure pretty much. So what is 0 minus 3x to the third? Negative 3x to the third. And you have to bring down the next term a 0x squared. Do the same thing. I'm going to compare the first numbers. I'm going to come over to my think bubble and I'm going to say, all right, x has to turn in to a negative 3x to the third. What should I multiply by? I need to have a negative 3, and I'm going to need to multiply by two more x's. So a negative 3x squared is the choice that I should put as my next term. Take this, multiply it times x, and you get negative 3x to the third. This, multiply it by 3, you get a negative 9x squared. Don't forget, you are going to subtract, subtract. Those are going to cancel. That's a good thing. That's what I want to happen. And I am left with a 9x squared. Bring down the minus 5x. Go back to the same process. We're doing the same thing over and over. I go to my think bubble and I say x is going to turn into 9x squared. How does that happen? Well, I'm going to have to multiply by a 9 and I'm going to have to multiply by an x to give me a 9x squared. This is my choice when I come up here. Once again, just kind of notice the x term is above the x choice that I'm using. 9x times x gives me 9x squared. It's good. They match. 9x times 3 is 27x. Now don't forget, you have to subtract here. Subtract, subtract, just like in third grade. That cancels, and I am left with a negative. Now these signs are the same, so I'm going to add the numbers and keep the sign of both numbers. So I'm definitely going to have a negative 32x. I've got another term. Bring down the 10. One more time. Compare. I see that I need a negative 32. So I will put negative 32 up here. Negative 32 times x is a negative 32x. Negative 32 times 3 gives me a negative 96. And don't forget that you need to subtract, subtract. Those cancel. If your lead term doesn't cancel, you did something wrong. 96 plus 10 is 106. Now 106 is your remainder. It is a positive remainder. So as I complete this problem, since it's positive, I will put plus 106, and it is divided by the factor x plus 3. This is your final answer when you're long dividing. Now, number 5 is the last one that we're going to do today. Um, 
what I will have you do is set it up. Do you notice the order is messed up here? I need to change it. That's a 2x to the third minus x squared. Uh-oh, I'm missing x's, so I want to make sure I put plus 0x, plus 25, and that whole thing is divided by x minus 3. So first I had to fix it. I put it in standard form, and I also made sure that I put placeholders in whenever possible x minus 3 is going to divide into 2x to the third minus x squared plus 0x plus 25. Now at this point, why don't you take off? I want you to fill in the work. Push pause on the video if you need to. I'm going to put the answer up in like 10 seconds. You work it out and I'll give you the answer. Hopefully after you worked it out, this is the answer that you got. Be careful. Make sure that you always are matching up the first terms because those are the things you're going to eliminate. That's the first thing. The second thing is don't forget to subtract. So I will talk to you in class tomorrow and good luck.